Thank you, Gerard, for um, agreeing to share on Psalm 27 for us. Um, Raywin is going to read the psalm out uh, just now, and then we'd be really interested to hear uh, your thoughts on it. Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his tabernacle will I sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me. O God, my Saviour, though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, breathing out violence. I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Well, Psalm 27 is one of my favourite uh, psalms. Uh, it's a psalm of David. Um, he's one of my heroes in the Old Testament. And David went through a, a, a lot of trials, a lot of suffering himself. Uh, if you remember his story, he was a nobody. Uh, he was the youngest son um, out with the sheep. When Samuel came to anoint one of Jesse's sons to be king, um, they, all, they all forgot about David. Um, they didn't, didn't think much of him. And then they re- realised that we ha- he had one more son. It was David. And of course, he turned out to be anointed by Samuel to be king. And, and then we see great victories. He overcame Goliath, tremendous courage. Um, uh, and then he was put into Saul's army and whatever he did turned to gold. It was amazing. And then it all went south. It all, all went badly for him. And that's what happens in our lives sometimes. Certainly that's what happened with Ginny and me. 20, 26 years walking with Jesus, everything was great and uh, got, was getting better and better. And then uh, we, we've been through the last 16 years or so, we've been through a lot of, a lot of pain and a lot of suffering. Well, what happened to David was that Saul became jealous of him and he literally drove him out from from uh, his court. He was driven out from going to the house of the Lord, which is probably the, one of the greatest things that David uh, suffered from. He wanted to be in God's God's house, worshiping the Lord. He was driven out from his family. Um, he he was made an outlaw and hunted down by by Saul. Well, Spurgeon believes Psalm twenty seven to be written by David shortly early on uh, when he was running from Saul. Um, he'd gone. He'd gone to uh, see one of the priests and was able to get some of the the bread there. And one of Saul's servants saw him and um, reported him later. But but he he was delivered. He he got away as he did in very many close close escapes. Did uh, did David? And so he's writing this psalm and he's describing what he's going through. It's early on. Later on, when he was on the run, he made a few mistakes, and um, God's very gracious with us. <laughs> Very merciful when we make mistakes on, on, on the journey. He made some mistakes, but he starts off. 
by declaring who is he trusting in. The Lord is my light and my salvation, of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? And you know, these are, these are really keys in our, our walk with Jesus, because first we need to understand that he really is the way. There's no other way. <laughs> when we talk about light, his word is, is a lamp to our feet and a light unto our path. Amazing. So we're, we, we know we're on the right path. It's a matter of keeping to that path, though. Um, he's my salvation. Well, he's given us eternal salvation, but he also saves us from the situations we go through here on earth. And that becomes part of our testimony that I mentioned earlier on. Uh, we, we get to situations when there seems like no way through. We're totally broken um, uh, at wit's end corner. I've been there many times. And guess what? God, God turns up and he rescues us through Jesus, through his victorious life. And then uh, he's the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? You know, one of the greatest things we can know as Christians is where to get more strength. One time David was was uh, really at rock bottom. Everything had turned against him. He was, had been, he'd been making mistakes. He'd gone the wrong way, uh, ended up on the wrong side of a fight with Israel, actually with the Philistines, Philistines. And then he, he had to go home, uh, was sent home. He couldn't, couldn't join the battle. Um, exhausted from the journey, got to his, his home city of Ziklag, looked up, and there was smoke in the distance. They discovered the Amalekites, who were not an, who were nasty people, child sacrifice, rape, all sorts of horrendous things they would do. They, they had taken all of the wives of David and his men and all of the children as well. Now, you can imagine how he must have felt there. And then his men turned against him in their pain, in their exhaustion, and they were going to kill him. They were going to stone him. And little ver you have to look out for these little verses in Scripture. Just a few words in 1 Samuel 30, verse 6. And it says, and David found strength in the Lord. <laughs> David found strength in the Lord. He knew where to get strength, you see. And that's what we need when we're going through hard times. Because Jesus, in this world, you'll have trouble. But take heart, I've overcome the world. You've got my life within you. I want you to learn in your hard times how powerful that life is. How amazing that that life is. And so David got aside with God. And that's I used to do that in the middle of the night when, when we were in our darkest hours after our precious son Alex had committed suicide. And um, we were totally broken. Uh, I used to get up in the middle of the night and, and weep literally till I had no more tears to cry. Jeannie um, went into, uh, in her grief, into depression and into anger and hatred. She hated herself. It's a horrible thing with suicide is you, you blame. Why didn't you stop it? Why didn't you do something about it? Um, she hated me because of this, you know, well, why did you bring us to the States? On and on like that. And she hated God. And then she lost her faith for two years. We were in utter darkness. Now, our marriage was hanging by a thread. And I used to get up, to go into that throne room um, of grace, as I call it. Hebrews 4, verse 16, it says we go boldly. You see, sometimes when you're really going through it, you don't feel like praying. And there's a, in one sense, the last thing you want to do, but you go bold. It takes courage. Lord, I'm broken here. Um, I don't know which way to turn, but I'm looking for you to help. Help me, Lord. That's a good prayer. Just help. That's all right. Just help. And we go boldly to the throne of grace that we may find mercy uh, and, and receive grace uh, in our time of need. Grace is Jesus, really. Is That's what grace is. It's his life in us. And that's what sees us through. So that was a great, that was a wonderful lesson um, that uh, David uh, knew where to get strength. And we need to know where we can get strength when we're going through a hard time. And then the next two verses talk about the, all the people who are coming against him. And uh, even though an army is, is coming against me, even though, even though I'm surrounded, I, I'm not going to fear because I've got God with me. But then verse four he says a very interesting thing. He doesn't say, Lord, deliver me from all of these things. His heart was the revelation of God's will. Uh, in, in other words, for us, it's Jesus. He just wanted uh, one thing I asked of the Lord. This is what I seek. I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to dwell upon the beauty of the Lord, to seek him in his temple. That's what godliness is really about. You just want Jesus to be revealed. OK, Lord, this is really hard, but I want your glory to shine through this. I want you to be revealed and your glory to be revealed, even though I'm really hurting here. Because that's what we see with Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane when it was, it was uh, so painful. He knew what was coming 
uh, and we know it was so painful because he was sweating blood. The, 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 the pressure on him. And he knew he was going to be tortured to death. It was going to be horrendous. He was going to watch his mother watch him die and his, and his loved ones. And he could think of his father as well. Just such an agony. Father, if this be possible, uh, it's in, it's in uh, Luke 22, I think it's 42. If it be possible, take this from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Amazing. That's what we should be saying when we're going through. Lord, I don't like this. No one pretends that suffering is, you enjoy it. It'd be a masochist. Of course not. It's painful. It hurts. And yet Jesus said to us, if you want to follow me, deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me. Look, I've shown you the way. I want you to do the same now. Lay your life down that my my life could be revealed in you. So, um, and that's what was David's heart, was a, was a beautiful, beautiful heart to want just of God's glory to be revealed. And that's what we want. At the end of the day, it's all about him, all about Jesus, all about revealing him. That's really interesting, Gerard. And um, is there a particular example uh, you'd like to um, share with us where this psalm became uh, particularly real to you? Well, th- th- there are um, two of the verses um, in this psalm, Psalm 27, um, were very relevant to me when I was working in HSBC. Um, folks at New Life, some of you remember this. Um, I used to work for HSBC and I, and I was going actually through a very, very difficult time at work. Um, all our experiences, God's, God's works through them to reveal more of Jesus in us. And in this particular season, uh, I was working in, in um, cards, actually. Um, my boss was giving me a really hard time. I, I think she may have been involved with the occult, um, but it, I, I was struggling. I was really struggling. And the Lord was speaking to me through Psalm 27 and verse, verses 5 and 6, particularly verse 5. Um, where it talks talks about where, again, where we know we can go when we're in trouble. Uh, in the time of trouble, it says, he will hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. I remember one night I was uh, I was in work and my friend who was a Christian came over to, and to chat with me and he was saying, well, how are you getting on? And I said, I'm, I'm struggling here. This is really hard. And actually, I was virtually crying. And I said, but if, you know, if God wants me here, then OK, I, I'll, I'll see this through. Um, but it was tough. And then the next day, literally the next day, I got a phone call from head office and they asked me to come and head up a, a, a new program. They weren't sure how big it was going to be. I got big, a big promotion from it, though. It was the bank's Y2K program, Millennium Bug. Some of you may remember that. And so I, I was promoted um, to this place. Now, interestingly, around about this time, I had a word of knowledge. It's great in New Life that you encourage folks to hear from God and share it. It's very, so powerful, so powerful when you share a picture or a word, something you feel God's saying to you. Could be directly, could be for the church, could be for an individual. In this case, it was an individual. It was Judy. Remember, dear Judy, uh, she's with the Lord now. Um, such a sweet, sweet lady, and, and uh, God had so touched her life, transformed her. Anyway, she came up to me. Jeannie was standing there at the same time. She said, I, I have had this sort of mental picture. I'm sure if it was a dream or what it was, but I've seen, I've seen you, Gerard, standing on a stage with a whole load of spotlights on you. Well, I didn't really understand it, what it meant at the time, but I held on to it, held on to it. Well, when I got into the year 2000 program and started managing, we realised how serious it was, very, very serious. And we had to get the big corporations to act and get all their supply chains compliant by the year 2000. Otherwise, we were going to be in big trouble. And so we, we knew that we should, the best thing to do was to get a, a head, head of state to come out uh, to, to acknowledge how serious it was. Because some people thought, oh, it's just a hoax, nothing's going to happen, you know. But it was actually very, very serious. So um, we ended up, uh, long story short, I ended up going to 10 Downing Street um, s- uh, several times and ended up sharing a platform with Tony Blair. <laughs> he came to our conference, HSBC conference, in, in uh, 1998, held at the Barbican. And it was on all the uh, mainstream media uh, all around the world, actually, it went to, on, on, in, on front pages of newspapers, 
from then on in, I became the sort of the guru, one of the gurus anyway for Y2K and all the issues. I was promoted. See, what does that, what does it say? In verse six, it says, and now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. <laughs> Out of the blue from a nobody, really, I was suddenly given all this profile. I was certainly put on a stage in the spotlights, Judy's Brew's prophetic word, promoted above my previous boss and, and became really, I mean, I, I, I had great, great favour with, with the executives within the bank, amazing favour out of all of that. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. You see, the Lord, ultimately, the Lord always wants us to come through in triumph. He wants us to learn that Jesus overcame every obstacle here on earth. He triumphed over everything. He triumphed over the world, everything, man's schemes, uh, religious spirits, all of that. He triumphed over Satan and his demons. Um, and that's the life that we have within us. And that's what we're discovering all the time. That's why it says in 2 Corinthians 2.14 that he continually leads us in triumph. And through us, he diffuses the aroma of Jesus in every place. <laughs> you see, again, it's all about revealing Jesus. I came to see there that, that the Lord uh, can, can promote you in an instant. He can change our situation in an instant. Nothing to him. And by his grace, working in us, that's how it happens. So that was a great, uh, a great practical example of where you're holding on to scripture. So when you get, a, when you, I guess one of the learning points out of this is when you get quickened by a word of God, and what I mean by that is you're reading it and it just, you can't get it out of your mind. You keep thinking about it. Maybe you wake up with it in the morning. Maybe someone gives it to you as a word. Hold on to those words because God's doing something in your life through those words. It's, it's very, very powerful. So, yeah, two special scriptures in Psalm 27, practically how God worked it out in my life. Thank you, Gerald. What an amazing story. Um, would you like to maybe just finish this morning by um, just praying for us? Nick, it'd be a great, great privilege to, to close with a prayer. Um, so, so thank you. So, Father, we do thank you so much for Jesus. Uh, we thank you that uh, it's your heart that he should be revealed through eternity, not only to those of us here on earth, but also to the angelic beings, that through us you might manifest your wisdom, you might manifest Jesus to the watching angels. And, Lord, I just pray that uh, all of us would be encouraged in our, our walk with you, our walk of faith, Lord, and we would we would uh, realise what a great honour and privilege it is that you've called us into your kingdom, uh, into this work that you're doing here on earth. And we thank you for your provision for our journey. Lord, you haven't left us as orphans. You've given us everything we need to do your will. That's what you said in your word. So we thank you for the promises that we stand on, uh, your, your promises, Lord. And we thank you, dear Holy Spirit, for, for being within us, Lord. Thank you that you're the one who pours in God's love again and again into our heart. I thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord, that uh, you give us power to be able to witness for Jesus Christ, whatever we're going through, that we can be a witness to his life and his joy and his peace. Lord, we love you and uh, we ask that you would strengthen us again, Lord, to journey on, to finish the race, to keep the faith to see Jesus glorified through our lives. And we pray this in his name. Amen. Bless you. Hope to see you uh, in 2021 um, when we can get over to the UK. God bless. Bye-bye.